Okay, so you have <coughs> stereo isomers. These have two, uh, two families of stereo isomers, the geometric and the uh, optical. Okay, geometric has two, some categories in it. It depends, if I say ligands here, ligands, there's the two category and the three category. Okay, if you have two ligands that are the same, uh, we're talking about, you name that cis or trans. Versus if you have three ligands the same, you name that CAC or MER. Okay, so what's the deal on ge geometric? All the things are still bonded to the same thing, but it depends. Are they bonded like this at 90 degrees, or are they bonded at 180 degrees? These geometric isomers are unique because if it's bonded at 90 or 180, it can change the physical properties and the applications of it. So that's the uniqueness of geometric isomers. Geometric isomers can have different physical properties, yet they look really similar. So an example would be uh, a metal that has A, A, C, and D, like that. It's square planar, and the A's are cis, versus a metal that has A's opposite of each other. The second one is trans. These two, even though I just made them up, would have different physical properties, even though they're pretty much the same. Each metal has two A's, a C, and a D. But they're arranged differently in space. Okay, that's the geometric. So different physical properties, arranged differently in space, but still bonded to the same stuff. Two A's and, two, and a C and a D. Okay, the optical is different than that. The optical is where, uh, oh, and synonyms for optical are like enantiomers or chiral. Uh, those are all have equivalent names. Optical and enantiomers refers to two things. For example, you. Uh, and your sibling are like sisters, so two. Do you know what I mean? You say sisters when you're referring to two things. Uh, chiral only refers to one thing. So like you are a human, your sister is a human. Things like that, that refers to one thing. So not probably the best analogy, but the best I can come up with at the moment. So chiral refers to the individual molecule. Optical isomers or enantiomers refers to two things. Okay, like sisters, cousins, brothers, etc. All right. Uh, so the unique thing about the optical isomer is that again it's bonded to the same thing, um, but there's not necessarily different physical properties. The main thing that you'll see everybody listed is how it rotates light. So for example, if you have light coming into your beaker and it has a chiral molecule in it, that light might rotate slightly to the left, say, and come out left. So an L sugar will rotate light to the left. A D sugar rotates light to the right. So light comes in, spins to the right slightly, and goes out. So it's known to rotate light, not necessarily different physical properties. There's other interesting things that optical isomers do. For example, um, I think there's more comp naturally like L sugars or L proteins than there are D proteins. That's just natural in the body. I forget if they're L or D or which one. But I think most of them are like essentially left-handed that are natural. So naturally we find certain types of molecules that are just one way, just left-handed. Or like analogously, most of the people in our population are right-handed. It's just kind of the way it works. So, handedness is interesting. Enzymes have a certain handedness. 
So they only react with certain molecules because they're a certain handedness. In the same way, your right hand is right handed, so it only goes into certain gloves. And that's it. Okay, so uh, this is more having to do with spatialness uh, or what I've been calling handedness. And this is defined as non super imposable mirror images. Non super imposable mirror images. So your hands are like that. So the right and left hand, they're mirror images of each other, but you can't superimpose one in the other. You can flip them over, but then you got your palms on the opposite sides. So there, there's a handedness to them. So what you want to do, uh, and there's a number of questions that could come out of this. It, for example, it would be a molecule draw all the stereoisomers. So you'd want to draw like cis and trans stuff. And the mirror images, if any exist. So something can be cis and have a mirror image. So if it's cis and have a mirror image, there's a trans equivalent, and there's a mirror image equivalent. So it falls in both categories. Sometimes they fall just in one category or the other. So, so sometimes we'll mix a category, sometimes we won't. Is that kind of okay? Okay, did you want to, oh, did you push on this too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the very end? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me try that that one, yeah. 